Hey, what's up, guys? Dr. Bar coming at you again. I'm going to do a quick little series on a homebrew that I'm putting together for the whole Mayan prophecy, doomsday, end of the world thing. Figure if, you know, the world's going to end, might as well go out with a nice craft beer, maybe a butt in a bowl, but that's another video. Anyway, it's going to be a quick little series, a couple of parts, just to show you guys how I put my things together, show you some of the gear that I use, uh, my grains, a little unboxing when I get my ingredients, which should be arriving today at some point. It's about 6 o'clock, UPS usually is here by this time. I don't know, maybe it's the weather, who knows. Anyway, speaking of the weather, it's about 68 degrees here in Miami. Uh, pretty freaking cold for us. I know you guys up north, it's probably nothing. You're still in your sandals and your shorts, but hey, you know how we get down, down here. Anywho, enough yapping. I'll show you some of the gear that I use, and yeah, let's start there. All right. All right, guys. You have to forgive me, my uh, field of view with this camera isn't that great. This is some of the things that I use here for my home brews. We got a nine and a half gallon stainless steel kettle, a three gallon better bottle. I use this for my secondary fermentation. Used to do five gallon batches, but I find three gallons are a little uh, work a little bit better for me. All my beers, I make uh, primary and secondary fermentation. I just find it helps the beer clear out a little bit better. Right here is my mash tun, which I made out of a simple igloo cooler with a digital thermometer poking out the side there. And one of the most important things, especially down here in the south, is a freezer with a digital uh, temp gauge. Hold on, let me move this out of the way here so I can show you that bad boy right there. That ran me about another $100, but uh, I would say that that's probably one of the most important things you can get, especially if you're going to do lagering. Anyway, a lot of people ask me about the whole homebrew thing. Real simple. If you can make tea, you can make beer. I would say the hardest part of the process is waiting the six or so weeks that it takes for uh, fermentation and you know proper bottle aging to occur so beyond that it's real simple man I mean don't be intimidated I thought it was gonna be something harder than what it was and it's really not I don't brew as often as I should but I'm hoping to remedy that you know in the next coming months anywho let's go on to a few other things that I use all right some of the other things I use here are a six gallon bucket Quick little uh, advertising shout out to Northern Brewer. If you need any gear, you need any uh, grain, any other things, that's what you need to holler at. Anyway, this is what I use for my primary fermentation. Uh, it's got some graduations on the side. I know it stops at five, but all the way at the top, I believe it's about six and a half gallons. Uh, but you should leave at least, you know, I would say I wouldn't fill it all the way to the top because you should leave some space so you don't have any blow off. Over here, this is a bottling bucket, which I made out of a simple, you know, Lowe's bucket. Got a little hole down here in the bottom there for a spigot. And an auto siphon that'll help you to rack your beer from primary to secondary. Uh, that works a lot. It helps a lot, excuse me. I didn't have one before, but after I bought one, I can't live without it now, so I don't know how I did it before. <clears throat> but that's a great investment right there. Anyway, like I said, just a few little things here and there, man. It's really not that complicated. It's no scientific. Uh, you don't need any like, three or four hundred dollars invested in gear, although you could if you wanted to. But you know, simple is better. At least that's how what I think. Anyway, all right, guys. Uh, hopefully, I'll be back with a quick unboxing in a little bit. See ya. All right, guys. So UPS finally got here. It's been about two or three minutes since they knocked on the door. This is a quick unboxing of my ingredients for this Apocalypse Ale, as I have dubbed it. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, the audio on this camera sucks. It's a sucky camera. What do you want for my life? Anyway, um, here we go. Got a nice little advertisement here for Brew Magazine. Nice magazine. If you don't got one, you should get it. It's pretty cool. Nice little Northern Brewer catalog. Uh, my receipt and whatnot. I know a lot of guys be all uh, antsy about showing your address on YouTube. I'm not. All right, well, here we go. Some hops. I'm trying to get this uh, to 
So I can get this stupid thing to focus. Give me a second. There we go. Wrong setting. Some French strizzle spalt. I've never used this before. Some UK. I've never used this before either. Uh, back to this one. This one's uh, say slightly fruity. Here's my yeast. We got some caramel. 120. This stuff smells awesome. Got some two row. It's a pound in this bag right here. Um, this is the big dog. Same thing. Some two row, but this is five pounds. So as you can see, it's really not that much. Really, this is a simple beer. Not too much stuff in it. Got six pounds of two row. I think three quarters of a pound of caramel. 120. I won't use this whole thing. Two hop additions. I'm going to use some of this for dry hopping as well. And your yeast. And most importantly, time and patience. But I just wanted to show you guys pretty much all the ingredients that goes in this, well, that's going in this particular beer. And yeah, uh, I guess I'll run you guys through brew day when it gets here. Probably won't be till Wednesday. Today is Monday. Wednesday is my day off. So I'll do that in the morning. And I'll bring you guys along with me for that. All right. See you guys then. Have a good one. Dodge the ball out.